Okay, um, today I just want to talk about how important um, your setup is in channel lock. Uh, in, a, in a past video, I talked about your shoulder tilt, your eye line, your hips, and your knees all being on the same line, how it promotes swinging in the channel. Uh, there's another part to that that's very important in the setup of channel lock, and it has to do with your arms. Okay. Uh, I, I have the opinion that your arms should be closer together. Take your grip. If you notice, this arm is over my left pec here on the lead side. All I'm doing is just moving it right there. The reason why I feel that is so important in the channel lock setup is because from this position, I can swing my arms freely in that channel. Okay. Also, uh, my body's not getting in the way. If I started from a square position, like this, can you do channel lock that way? Yes, you can, but you're going to struggle doing that. Uh, the reason why I say that, coming from this position, your arms are wider apart. Um, it's going to promote you to swing more down the line in the back swing and you're going to miss that channel. The only way to not do that is you're going to have to make a bigger shoulder turn. And to me, that's difficult. That is extremely difficult. And that's one of the benefits of channel lock in a good setup is you don't have to worry about that. So my recommendation, people that are not as flexible, which is the majority of the population, uh, so and you're going to have some young people that are extremely flexible and they could probably go from this position, a square position, and do it. But why not just take that move out of it? Put your arm there, you're there. You've got a free swinging arm, you're going right there in the channel, and uh, it makes it so much easier. Um, you don't have to worry about how your shoulders turn, it's just, you just go there. It, it just makes it so much simpler. So, um, also it has the benefit of uh, getting rid of a chicken wing. If you try to do channel lock from a square position, I've, I've seen people do this, um, you're more prone to having a chicken wing because um, your arm's starting from this position. And, I mean, just look at it from there. Even if you extend it, this arm's on this side of my chest and it can't clear this side of my chest. So when you make your swing, you'll see a lot of people that have this look right here. And um, we really don't want that. That's, that's something that we don't want in channel lock. Uh, now that being said, every swing has a chicken wing in it at some point. Most of the professional players, their chicken wing is after they've already hit the ball and then the arm folds up. Uh, there's been some exceptions to that. You take Lee Westwood, uh, Jordan Spieth, Calvin Pete. These guys are some of the best players that's ever lived. And you'll notice them at impact. They have a little bit of that. But you got to think, they're, they're doing a traditional golf swing, and they're basically just trying to keep the club face square or longer down the line. And I would never say anything to change that with those guys like that because they've made a bunch of money swinging that way. Uh, but I think if you do it early in your swing, you're not going to be a very powerful ball striker. You're going to lose a lot of zip on the ball, and uh, it pretty much all turns into a right arm swing when you do that. You're hitting everything with your right arm. This arm is not being involved at all. And that's another subject we'll talk about later on. But, um, but with me, if I do this, it just basically gets both of my arms working together. I'm not just left arm dominant, I'm not just right arm dominant. If I do this, I have both arms working together. And um, so when I hit the ball, I go in my back swing with all my protocols, I hit it, I just release the club from inside to out, swinging across the line, and I want the extension right there at the ball. I'm just extending right into the ball. 
it's none of this at impact with the elbow because that you're hidden from a weak position when you do that and um, if you don't realize you're doing that take your camera take your iPhone or whatever you have and film yourself from dead on when you swing and if you see this at impact uh, you know there's things you can do to work on that so and that's just by being arms closer together to recap on that and being connected and just releasing the club a little bit early right there now um, I've seen comments where people are saying well you're opening your shoulders and you're not doing channel lock and you're you're not doing this or that but um, the thing I want people to understand what you do at impact is everything if, if your shoulders are open prior to impact, that's not a good thing. But at impact, if you're extended, your shoulders are closed, you hit the ball, you're swinging inside out across the line. Once that ball is gone, you hit it, it's gone, you're going to have some type of rotation in your golf swing. There's absolutely no way to prevent that 100%. Um, if you didn't, you would be swinging inside to out, and you would, if your shoulders stayed closed, you would be way out there. But once the ball is gone, the shoulder works up, works up, impact, you hit the ball, it works up in a way, and then you'll get that, that look right there about you. And I think that's where some of the confusion comes in with the shoulders being closed. It's all at that moment of impact. So, um, and also just having in your setup, having your arm right there, that's going to help you keep closed shoulders. If you're from this position, a square position, man, all that, all that promotes is swinging out of the channel, shoulders coming over, um, you don't have any shoulder tilt. Um, the only way you can get shoulder tilt from square on is if you do something that is manipulating your spine by doing this. And I, I've seen all types of instructors say, get in this position. Well, channel lock for me is not about doing that. I do it in a natural way. I have my grip. I'm reaching in from underneath when I take my grip. Look what it does to my shoulders. I'm not trying to do this or do any false manipulation of my spine. To me, that's just a way to get hurt. Um, and uh, sure, this promotes hitting up on a driver doing this, but why do I want to do this false position? Why not just, just do it naturally from my grip and I have it automatically? So those are a few things that might help you with your channel lock. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free. Uh, you want to discuss something you might not agree with, I'm, I would love to talk about that. And... Uh, Keep on locking, and we'll see you later on.